All right, today we're on a field trip. I'm over at my friend's house, and he has this cool machine. So this is this is the machine that goes from goes from here to here. So um, you've seen my machine, and it basically is a tracking generator and a uh, spectrum analyzer. And so I can I can look at uh, transmission, uh, and uh, I can use a coupler um, like like one of these. I can put a coupler in series with mine. I can look at back reflections, so I can look at SWR or return loss, things like that. Um, so what this machine does is it has a tracking generator. It's a separate box, um, and the two machines uh, talk to each other with uh, HPIB. So uh, they they become one unit when you hook it all together. And then uh, the uh, tracking generator, you, you can actually set uh, with the keys on this machine and automatically programs the tracking generator. So that it acts as one machine just from this front panel. Um, and then uh, in order to do, um, well, first of all, I should tell you what this thing is. It's a vector network analyzer. So um, there are different types of uh, analyzers. There's a scalar network analyzer. A scalar network analyzer will give you uh, power uh, either reflected power or transmitted power. Um, because this can do a vector, it also includes phase information. So it can do power forward and backwards and it can measure reflectances and things like that. But it can also retain the phase information and do a bunch of calculations with phase. Um, so uh, you still need couplers. And so this box here has the couplers inside. So it has uh, couplers for forward power and reflected power on this port. And then it has two over on this side, reflected power and forward power um, on this side. And so if you have some type of thing you want to test, let's say you want to test this coupler, uh, you can insert it in between here. And it'll measure forward stuff, backward stuff. It'll measure reflected stuff on either side. It does the whole thing. And, and this is kind of the kind of the chart here of what uh, what it measures. So uh, you can see it's got. Uh, things called S11, S12, S22. Um, those are scattering uh, uh, network parameters. Um, and uh, don't, don't ask me what scattering comes from. It's from an old microwave days. Um, but uh, what it does is it gives you forward power, reverse power. It gives you uh, reflected power on both sides and things like that. So uh, you can take a look at losses and insertions and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to measure the uh, piece of coax that we had and that I measured on my machine. Now my machine only went up to a gigahertz and we saw that this thing uh, started to become lossy at 700 megahertz where it's specified uh, and I can only test it up to uh, 1 gigahertz. This machine can go up to 20 gigahertz um, so we could test it at 20 but it's only specified up to 2.7 so we'll sweep it between 0 and, and 3 gigahertz and uh, see what's going on. So these machines need a very, very fancy calibration, which we've done ahead of time. Um, it requires you to uh, uh, connect these together. And so uh, it calibrates uh, forward direction and reverse direction. Um, you uh, separate the two, and now there's an opens. And then you calibrate it with opens. And then you put in a short here. Uh, so there's a reflection. And so you calibrate it with shorts on both sides. And then you put in 50 ohm loads and you calibrate it to 50 ohm. So the whole machine is calibrated a very fancy, very fancy calibration takes some time. And um, so we should be able to now insert this and we'll see, see what this thing does. Okay, so I've put in the uh, coax and we're taking a look at the, uh, uh, the transmission. So this is the loss in transmission. So the, uh, the zero is on the center here. So we, we start out, we're, we're going to sweep from zero to 10 gigahertz. So at, at zero, there's a tiny bit of loss, and then it gets lossier and lossier and lossier and lossier and keeps going. And so each division is 20 dB. So this machine has a much lower noise floor than my machine did. So I was getting uh, 18 dB loss, but, but that was due to the accuracy of my coupler. My coupler couldn't measure anything lower than that. So this machine is much, much better. So we'll be able to look at very, very, uh, very small uh, signals. So each one is 20 dB. So here at, at uh, 10 gigahertz, we are, we are at uh, 20, 40, 60 dB. So 60 dB 
of attenuation gain, uh, attenuation loss in this uh, coax. That's absolutely amazing. So we have a marker here, and I can uh, I can change the location of this marker. And I don't know if you can read that or not, uh, but this is a, a 2.7 gigahertz. So this is where it's spec specified. So we're looking at a, uh, a 36 dB uh, attenuation uh, at that frequency. And at 700 megahertz, which was the other uh, side, we're looking at about a, a 22 dB. Um, so uh, that gives you about the range. Now I think the way this thing worked was that there was a short at the end and if the signal did run to that short and reflect and come back it would see double the path. So if you had a 20 dB loss and if it went there and came back you'd have a 40 dB loss. So uh, it seems like that was a clever thing to do. Um, so so we know that there's, there's good attenuation um, and much, much better than my machine could measure, but this machine can measure something really special, and that is the impedance of the coax. So let's take a look at that. All right, so what we're looking at now is what's called a Smith chart. And uh, go into Wikipedia or whatever, learn all about Smith charts, because they're really, really cool. But basically what it is is um, there is, uh, this is a graph of impedance. So the very, very center of this circle is 50 ohms. So if you're right at the center, you're 50 ohms. If you are a short, then you are right here uh, at the end of that line. If you are open, you are over here. And then everywhere else are complex impedances. So there's inductance and there's capacitance uh, that factor into this thing. So these, these curved lines are constant inductances and, and the circle lines are constant capacitances. and and uh, you can learn all about these. But uh, what we're interested in is, is this thing 50 ohms or not? And so we still have a marker, and we can, we can change our little marker, and we can go uh, to different frequencies. So if we go here to uh, uh, 700 megahertz, uh, which is where this thing is specified, we're at 700 megahertz, we can actually read the ohms right up here. It's 52 ohms. And then uh, as we move, uh, it's taking this little curled section here, uh, but it does curl back, so it's trying to stay near 50 ohms, so that's good. Um, so if we go up here to 2.7 gigahertz, uh, 2.456, 2.7, uh, we are at 80 ohms. So this thing is a little bit off at the higher frequencies, um, but it certainly is a lot of attenuation, so it doesn't really matter so much <laughs> that it's 80 ohms. It's still going to kill all of the power that goes down this uh, transmission line. Uh, but you can see that it is a 50 ohm impedance uh, uh, type of cable. So uh, I, can, I can use that 100 feet for experiments and stuff in my garage because it's a nice, uh, a nice piece of coax. We can go down here to a very, very low frequency. Uh, uh, 45 megahertz, and it is almost exactly uh, 50 ohms, 50.5. Uh, so yeah, so this uh, this coax is uh, is pretty good. Okay, this is a graph you don't see all the time. Uh, this is a graph of frequency versus phase information. Okay, so as the electromagnetism goes down the coax, uh, it's going to take some time which means it's going to have some delay, which means it's going to have a phase shift. So the phase is constantly changing from end to end as you ramp ram through frequencies. And so um, this graph is of angle, phase angle in the y direction and frequency in the horizontal. So what happens is that we start at zero, which is that center line, and we're gonna go down, 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 and uh, each uh, increment is 90, degrees. So we go down 90 degrees, then we go down to minus 180 degrees, and then there's a phase reversal um, just mathematically inside the machine. So we pop up to 180 degrees and then we start over again. So we go 180 to zero, and then down to minus 180, then whoop, up to 180 again. So, so each one of these is a 360 degree rotation. And if you use the math and you figure out how, uh, what the slope of that is, so how many degrees of phase shift do we have per nanometer or per, uh, per, per uh, uh, hertz, um, we can do some math and we can actually then calculate how fast the thing is traveling and then we can see what its 
uh, distance in time is between the start and the stop. So we can look at the uh, length of time it takes to go through this spool of wire. So remember that I counted this earlier. Uh, there was about a hundred turns. Each turn is about a foot. Speed of light is a nanosecond per foot. So if we have a hundred feet, nanosecond, we have a hundred nanoseconds. So we should expect about a hundred nanosecond delay between start and stop. So let's have the machine do that calculation and we'll find out if I'm right or not. Okay, so what are we looking at now? That's well, still frequency in the X and in the uh, Y it is actually time. So it is actually delay. And so we are uh, about 50 nanoseconds per division. So 50, 100, so it's a little bit more than 100. In fact, we can read it off right here. It's bouncing around a bit, but it's about 110 nanoseconds from end to end. So yay, uh, our very crude way of counting turns and uh, knowing the speed of light. Yeah, that's about right.